there's also uh, this is a an interesting topic um a friend of ours recently bought a house and one of the neighbors said you know that house was uh was a dope house was was you know the guy got busted he's in prison that that you bought the house from turned out he hadn't bought the house from that guy it had been the house had been seized by the police because of the drug raid and then uh, sold to to a guy who fixes houses up and flips them and then that guy had sold it to the person who bought the house who's the the friend of ours and he was immediately freaked out thinking oh my god what if it was a meth house because meth houses can be toxic I mean the chemicals get into the walls and things and and uh, sometimes you just have to tear them down you know or just strip them down to their skeletal remains and replace them turned out that the guy had been growing pot in the in the house instead of making meth so it was no big deal but uh it was a uh for for us you know having having a friend go through this it was like oh that's interesting you don't know where the house came from which raises an even larger question what if somebody was murdered in the house what if somebody committed suicide in the house what if what if, well there there was a case actually of a uh, of a person who bought a house and then discovered that a guy had tortured and murdered something like 20 women in this house uh, it, it, I mean it's just oh oddly enough it was in Ferguson Missouri isn't that strange where a second young man has been shot now by the police but the house in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, this is from diedinhouse.com, uh, where a woman that was renting the home learned from a TV documentary that it was, it, was, it was used as a torture chamber by a suspected serial killer who killed between 12 and 20 women. Uh, there was a house in Thornton, Pennsylvania, that uh, a guy killed, him, killed his wife, his two children, and himself in the house. Now, wouldn't you want to know that before you bought the house? There's no way to find that out. Well, actually, there is a way to find it out. There, you, you can go through uh, the, if you look by the address, you probably won't find it, although you may find a police record that has that. You pretty much have to know the names of the people who lived in the house. There is one for-profit website, diedinhouse.com, that provides some information about this. But the bottom line, there was just this uh, Pennsylvania court this family came in and said, we just, you know, we bought a house and some horrible things happened in this house. Bought it as an investment for 450000 sold it to somebody else for 600000 didn't tell the $600,000 buyer that there had been a murder-suicide in the house. And if that's disclosed to a potential buyer, it reduces the value of the house by at least $100,000. And so this person sued, and the court in Pennsylvania said, sorry, there's no legal requirement for you to be told that awful things happened in the house. It gets very strange. I, you know, the, my personal strange story, and I've, I've told this before, uh, back when I was uh, 16 or thereabouts, I had a friend named Ward who was uh, struggling with depression among other things and uh, in fact Ward was was a gay teenager I mean he was struggling with depression that I think came out of being being gay and among other things I, I, I think he also was genuinely suffering from something like bipolar disorder and myself and a friend of mine uh, we didn't hear from him for three days and so we went over to his apartment and the door was unlocked we walked in and he was dead on the bed he had taken an overdose of barbiturates the bottle, in fact, the pill bottle was on the table next to him. He, had, he I think it was second all. He had taken like 20, 30 capsules of it. And he was just dead, dead. He had been dead for a day or so. And four or five years later, or maybe three years later, it was around the time I was 18. It would have been about three years later. Two, three years later. Uh, my best friend, Clark, Clark Stinson, 
I, I got it. He had come home over Christmas time. He had joined the military. This was during the Vietnam War. I never got it straight if he had been drafted or he just did it to avoid being drafted, but he went off to basic training. He came home for Christmas right after basic training, and his wife called me all hysterical and said, come on down here, Clark's just killed himself, and gave me the address. And I drove down to that address, and there in the same house and in the same room, Clark had committed suicide. He'd shot himself. And that totally creeped me out. I mean, I, you know, because I'd never thought of Clark as being suicidal. And it made me wonder, you know, ghosts, house, I mean, does this, does this kind of thing happen? And shouldn't there be a law that says that these things have to be disclosed? Or should there not be? Should we go the libertarian route? I mean, we've been talking about libertarians and libertarian thinking, and the libertarians say, no, you know, it's like, buyer beware. It's a brave new world. Somebody sells you a house and they make a big profit on it because they bought it knowing that nobody would buy it because there'd been a murder-suicide. Then they sat on it for a year and you came in from out of state and had no idea and they sell it to you for a huge profit. You're screwed. So should we have some sort of a... Um, should we have some sort of a law or maybe just a national database or should it be attached to things like, um, you know, the mortgage documents that, that transfer from person to person? If something above a certain threshold has happened in that house, we sort of do it with cars. I mean, you can find out if your car, again, I'm, I'm, I, I believe that there's some government involvement in this. I, b I believe that there are public records, although I might be wrong. This might be entirely, you know, private companies are offering this service. But you can find out if the car that you're thinking of buying had been had been totaled at one point and was put back together and, and sold into the market without telling you. And I believe that that's a crime in a number of states. Now, in California and uh, Texas, you're required to disclose these things. But nowhere else in the United States. 